in the bottom right we have alpha playing greenfinger in the blue and in the top left we have Ralph Xander playing vesper that's like a very fun matchup to watch and play oh yeah because greenfinger actually has stuff he can do against smoke like yeah, he can put like... vines up and stuff and like keep vines up before smoke comes out so he can kind of keep himself protected One thing I'm noticing very straight away, like they're both, these two know the capture phase. These are, we're now getting like a more of an even match between two like strong players. Ooh, right, Alexander taking a, a bit of a dangerous capture phase, I feel. Giving away Groove or, or a three hit from a mountain. Although Alpha choosing to just go for the village. I guess Vesper can't really knock it down. Oh wow, he has 1650 gold. Dragon, <laughs> oh yeah, he wanted a dragon yeah. early. The dragon rush. And Alpha's just making sure he has all the stuff he'll need to deal with that. Witch comes out, he already has a mage. Probably saw the gold getting banked and built a mage early just in case. Because even if it wasn't a dragon, if you see someone banking gold, it's going to be... A balloon or a witch or a harpy, so you need like a mage is necessary. Yeah, if you don't know what they're banking for, you usually you can bank to, and that way you uh, you have enough for your response. Okay. Ralzander, he's just walking back. Like he's not really taking these naval fronts at all. Like that isn't the thing. He hasn't. He's built one merfolk in this game. And Alpha has four already. So Alpha's just gonna walk forward and throw and throw little Merfolk spears at things. Ooh, even knocks down that water village already. Yep. And uh, the the witch can cover for the Merfolk in case the dragon goes over there. Ooh, this is risky. Like, this dragon could, in theory, die this turn. This is, like, very aggressive. I think he's fighting to, like, create pressure so that his thief can go and steal uh, alone. But he doesn't have transport to bring him back. Yeah, Greenfinger is just going to build Groove. Ooh, Knight comes out for the crit. And yeah, that dragon is not really... Oh, I guess you could kill the top sword. There's nothing really protecting that. Yeah. Dragon surround isn't complete, so that's a bit unfortunate. But would have liked the Merfolk to go more aggressive onto the enemy Merfolk. Because usually what happens, if, if you force the enemy to build more Merfolk, that's more damage to the economy than uh, ca decapping a village. Yeah, Dragon gets out, the witch got killed, so Rylexander getting out of this pretty, pretty good. Pretty, yeah, pretty good. that said, he is losing a bunch of stuff. Nightcrit comes down on the mage. Nature's cry. Nature's cry, let's get that nice defensive lineup. Mage is almost dead, very, very low health. And there's this big wall of units now, and vines. But the dragon can one-shot the vines on the road. Yeah, I like to kill a mage instead, though. Alright, we got- Oh, suicide's the mage. Which I think is the smart idea, because otherwise Greenfinger would just kill it. Yeah. Allowing Greenfinger to chain grooves is a, a nightmare. It's like the best situation for Greenfinger, I feel. Suiciding a unit, I don't know how I feel about that. And like really like putting the knight in a position where it could die too. Um, well, it is like the only anti-air from uh, Ryle Alexander. I'm expecting another air unit to be built this turn. Yeah, there we go, balloon. So the mage can just hold. And like heals the dragons, so that makes it a very gold efficient heal too. Yeah, 
Vesper has been sitting on Groove for a few turns now. Yeah, Grimfinger's almost got Groove again. He's just kind of punching that village over and over. And his his thief might actually reach his hideout. The difficult yeah, bit will be the bridge, but I think he might be able to make yeah, it. It's surprising that he would reach it considering there's a dragon on the field. Oh, loses another witch to a mage. I think it's the same mage. Yeah. Yeah, that's like mistakes that really hurt you. And loses. The mage got hit by the knight, so the dragon is now like uncontested for a while. Like, the only thing that could really reach would be the Harpy. But I don't think he's going to manage to, like, drill it that far. Ooh, the mage might die, actually. There's, like, a ton of small interactions between units that could be game-changing, but that just, they all happen at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like, the main thing I'm taking away from this situation, I think Ralzada has, like, a slight lead. Oh, he's he's closing on the HQ. He's probably gonna, like, try to close it with Vesper Groove. Like, now Alpha has to be watching out for this. Oh, Dragon comes down, lands a hit. There's nothing to stop the Dragon anymore. Well, I guess the Harpy can land a decent hit on it. Oh, we're seeing suicides coming on Vesper. Is there actually going to be a real attempt at a lethal here? I don't think there's anything to really follow up, though. He's just kind of throwing units away. Yeah. Not sure how I feel about that. Opens two sides on the HQ as well. Ah, oh, and there we go. Just surrenders. Relzander yeah, just I pushing do. in a bit too... A bit too well. I think really like losing both witches like that really hurt him like immensely yeah that's a huge deal because those are your anti-dragon units really and like the mages as well he just wasn't yeah his mages got poked like quite often too so right alexander playing around his dragon very well yeah this is a great map for the dragon lots and lots of road lots of villages on road sea that is uncontested outside of witches so it always threatens to just fly and kill merfolk in the sea yeah but i will say sometimes uh it does feel like your dragon can't do anything that's true it takes a lot of skill but to make a dragon yeah, work on you, this map when you rush a dragon like that and you make it work like you get very good value out of it 